Sunday school again this morning, boys and girls. Last time, we talked about the spies that went into Jericho to find out for Joshua what was going on. And they found out that the people were afraid because they knew God had given this land to the Israelites. So now it's time for Joshua to take over and lead the Israelites into the promised land. But first, they have to cross the big river, the Jordan River. So let's look in our Bibles in Joshua chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. They gave orders to the people. They said, watch out for the Ark of the Covenant, the Lord your God. The priests who are Levites will be carrying it. When you see it, you must move out from where you are and follow it. Then you will know which way to go. You have never gone this way before, but don't go near the ark. Stay about a thousand yards away from it. So the ark of the covenant, God tells them the ark of the covenant is going to go first. Remember, that's a vessel that they built to contain the Ten Commandments that God had given them and a few other things that they put in there with it. And so the priests were going to carry the Ark of the Covenant, uh, and they had to carry it in a very special way, and everyone had to be careful not to touch it because it was holy. It was sacred to God. And so the Ark of the Covenant was going to go first across the river, and something amazing was going to happen because God wanted them to see a spectacular miracle that would show them that God was with them and that God was truly giving them this land. So Joshua told the priest to do what God said and to take the Ark of the Covenant and go to the river. And he said, when you reach the edge of the Jordan, step into the water. And the priest did that. And the river was flooded. This was in the spring when all the waters are melting and coming down the river's So it was really flowing fast, and it was wide. Is this a river that you would want to cross? I think the people were probably pretty afraid to see this, but they trusted God, and they were going to do what he said. They had no idea how God was going to get them across, but they did what he told them to do. So the priests took the ark, they went down, and they stepped in. And let's read verses 15 and 16 to see what happened. The water of the Jordan was going over its banks. It always does that at that time that the crops are being gathered. The priests came to the river. Their feet touched the water's edge. Right away, the water coming down from the river stopped flowing. It piled up far away at a town called Adam near Zarathan. The water flowing down to the Dead Sea was completely cut off, so the people went across the Jordan River opposite Jericho. So the water just stopped flowing. The Jordan River just stopped. God did this this miraculous thing to show them that he was in charge, and it was his time for them to go into the promised land and to take the city. So the priests stood in the middle of the river, holding the Ark of the Covenant, and the water stayed stopped the whole time they were in there. And all of the thousands of Israelite people crossed the river on the dry riverbed because the water had stopped flowing until they got to the other side. And then we find out in verse, moving on into chapter 4, in verse 2 and 3, another thing God told them to do. Choose 12 men from among the people. Choose one from each tribe. Tell them to get 12 stones from the middle of the river. They must pick them up right from where the priests stood. They must carry the stones over with all of you, and they must put them down at the place where you will stay tonight. So God told them to get 12 people, 12 men, one from each of the 12 tribes, so that they would all be represented And each of them get a stone, so they're going to have 12 large stones, as big as they can carry. Imagine how big of a stone a strong man can carry. And they carry this rock out of the river as all of the people are crossing over. And this is going to be what helps them remember what God did for them on this special day. 
So all of the men got their stones and carried them across, and all of the people and all of the flocks finished crossing the Jordan River. And then the priests bring the Ark of the Covenant out of the river. They're the last ones. And as soon as they step out of the river and back up onto the land, the water starts flowing again. And do you think if you were one of those people up in the city of Jericho, the people in Jericho, remember they're They have these thick walls, and they have houses built into the walls. They can see the river from there. They can see that the river stopped. They can see that this whole army and group of people crossed the river. Then they can see that the river is flowing again. They must be thinking they're in trouble because God is doing something for those people. So they took their 12 stones that they carried out in the river and they built a memorial. They built an altar where they could worship God and remember what God had done for them at this special time. And it would stand for a long time because it's built out of stone. It's not going to just fall down. And for generations, all the children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren could ask them, what do these stones mean? Why did you build this? And they could tell them, the amazing thing that God had done for them. But it wasn't just for them. There's one more verse that tells us something else in verse 24. He did it so that all the nations on earth would know that he is powerful. He did it so that you would always have respect for the Lord your God. So it wasn't just for the Israelites to remember, but it was for all the nations on earth, all the people who ever saw that Building that built-up memorial of stones would know that God is the one true God and that he is powerful and they should respect him. So just like the Israelites in this story, when they looked at that flooded river and they did not know how they were going to get across that, sometimes we have situations in our lives that seem impossible and we don't know how God's going to solve our problem. But we don't always have to know how. God is going to do amazing things in our lives to show us that he is our God and he loves us and he wants us to remember that. So maybe you can remember some of the amazing things that God has done in your life. Maybe you want to write them down. Maybe you want to keep a journal or draw a picture of that amazing thing or post something on Facebook and tell lots of other people about the amazing thing that God has done in your life. Well, I hope you have a great week this week, and we'll come back next week with more of our story.